Hey everybody, and welcome to this first taste of the Ardna Merkin. Now this is a bottle that I randomly picked up, only because I didn't recognize it. Kind of going back to what I mentioned to you guys, pick up things that you don't recognize, or that don't look all that impressive, because they're probably going to be interesting. Now, funny thing is, so the Ardna Merkin, it's from Western Highland, right? It's a single malt scotch. Let's just kind of get that out of the way. It's 48 point, uh, sorry, 46.8%. This one in particular was bottled in March of 2021. Now, one thing that they're doing here, before I even open this up, uh, just I thought it was very cool and I love when distilleries do this kind of stuff because transparency is important. So they have this little QR code on the back that tells you exactly what is in this um, down to the casks. And Brooke Lottie does something very similar. Several other distilleries do something very similar. But being as how this is a newer distillery and a newer product, I'm psyched that they chose this path. So in the off chance that they see this, good job. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about this. Hold on. Yeah, not impressive pop, but that's okay. Um, this is, <laughs> interestingly enough, looking at that little readout of the casks, there were 62 casks that comprised this whiskey. And they were both peated and unpeated spirit. They were um, Spanish Oloroso, American Oloroso, and Pedro Jimenez cas uh, casks, PX casks, and as well as X bourbon casks. So kind of a lot of stuff going on here. And between 62 barrels, there's quite a bit of... Um, like, I want to th say that they kind of just dialed this into exactly what they wanted to do, which is great. Now, I will say that the oldest cask in here was 2014. The newest was 2015. So this is, uh, what is it, 2021? So this is like a five, six year old whiskey. Um, makes sense. They don't put the you know age on here, which also makes sense. So interesting. Um, I can tell you just from smelling it from this far away, this is going to be kind of a fruity whiskey, I, I think, um, at least on the nose it tastes, it smells that way, but it's also peated, so I expect that I'm going to be getting some sort of smoke. But let's go ahead and give this a nose. Okay, so right away it's reminding me a little bit actually of uh, Highland Park, um, just, just a tad, like a Highland Park 12. It's not as fruity as it initially seemed. Maybe some of those lighter uh, no, notes came rising up this high. Who knows? I don't know how air works. <laughs> so um, anyway, this is a, an interesting nose here. So we've got kind of like candied apples. You've got pear for sure. There is some salt air in here. Um, there's a hint of smoke. Like nothing nothing about smelling this is, going, is making me think that this won't taste a little peaty. Uh, and that's great. The... The range of peated spirit to unpeated spirit was about half and half. So that's that's interesting. I wish more places did that whole breakdown, only because for somebody like me who, who kind of thinks a lot about this stuff, it would be interesting to see what kind of percentage is peated versus unpeated spirit in whiskeys that I really like. So very interesting. A little bit of orange in there. So it is very fruity. It's just also got a hint of peat to it. All right, I have waited too long. Let's go ahead and have a drink. Cheers. Okay. The initial taste is, my initial reaction is this is pretty good. Um, it's not blowing my socks off yet, but I do think that it might. So let, let's give this a minute just to you know, kind of sit. This is my first drink of the night as well. So, uh, you know, I like to liven up the, the my palate a bit by having a couple of sips. Uh, let's have another one. Yeah, this is really speaking to me in the way of Highland Park. It's interesting. I mean, Highland Park, if I remember correctly, is pretty far north. And this is pretty far uh, west on, I believe it's the Arden Merkin Peninsula, but I'll verify that before I do my real review on this. This is interesting. It's it's growing on me quite a bit. The second taste is way more smoky than the first. And to the point where that's that's now most of what I'm tasting. The initial reaction was a little bit more fruity. There was um, orange, which is good, but it's almost almost like a like a singed. Um, like there's something ashy, not ashy. What do I want to say? It's because it's not ash. It's not ashy like a cigar and it's not like a lit match. It's more. It's like burning paper. If you ever, you know, 
burn a napkin or burn paper or something like that. That kind of smell is how this tastes. Hmm. Dug that one up from deep. <laughs> what does this taste like? Burnt paper. <laughs> All right. So overall, this is definitely growing on me. I think it's uh, a little bit weaker in the peated side than I would like. The... Oloroso is mostly coming off on the nose and very little on the taste, which makes some sense. If you look at the breakdown of this, it's not heavy on the Oloroso barrels. It's maybe got, I, I didn't count, but let's say 10 out of the 60 barrels had some sort of Oloroso sherry influence. So not going to be super heavy, but I also don't know that it's doing it a service. Um, maybe it's just there for the nose, but realistically, if you have a nose that's fruity and then you taste it and it's smoky and very little fruit, that kind of just throws it off to me. I don't know. That's an interesting, interesting idea. Um, let me have yet another sip. Hmm. No medicinal uh, peat or smoke flavor from, from like what you would get with a Laphroaig, for example. This is a much lighter peat, a much more flavorful peat, honestly, in my in my opinion, whereas a Laphroaig is, is kind of overpowering towards that. This is trying to be flavorful as peat, and I, I do like this. Like, overall, this is growing on me quite a bit. I'm interested to dig into this a little bit more. Uh, but if you are on the fence about this one, this is a $58 bottle, at least near me. I... Um, would I recommend it for $58? I think so. I think so. I'm not sure. I would compare it to your local Highland Park 12 price. Um, if it's within about $10 of that, I think this is something worth trying. I suspect this is going to grow considerably on me, and I can already tell that there's a couple of flavors that I can't identify yet. So I'm, I'm looking forward to trying them out. There's actually, just while this is sitting and I'm talking and such, the way it's drying on my tongue is actually giving me like a little bit of a minty flavor, which is interesting and you don't get that much. Uh, maybe it's maybe it's like a menthol, though, but it's it's drying in kind of this this crisp way that is reminding me of something kind of fresh. So it's interesting. Maybe that's like the salt air. Um, or the just the sea salt kind of flavor that these tend to have. Uh, a couple of quick other facts that I just happen to see is that they do store all of their barrels on site, which is awesome. Uh, they have their own dunnage warehouse, so that's that's cool. Or dunnage, I guess, with dunnage warehouse. I'm not sure if you'd actually call it that, but dunnage is basically just underground, like rocky stone area that kind of grows moss and very earthy kind of things. So, uh, you get that a lot in Scotland, uh, at least places that that actually keep their own stuff. Um, yeah, I, I kind of give this like a, like a half hearted buy it at the moment. I don't think the like, if this was like a hundred dollar bottle, I wouldn't say go for it, but I do like it initially. I think that you will probably like this initially if you are into peated whiskeys. Um, that's about it. So go ahead and give this a try and, uh, I'll see you in a few weeks when I do kind of more of a formal review on this. So cheers. <laughs>